What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, shrinksandsneakers.com. So I am on a bipolar kick over the last week or so, and I'm going to continue that bipolar discussion with a talk about Valproate or Depakote and its use in bipolar disorder. So if you think about the mood stabilizing medications, I'd say there's two major mood stabilizing medications in bipolar that everyone should be aware of, and that is lithium and of course Depakote or Valproate. So let's talk about Valproate here, and let's talk about the indications and what we do with it, how we use it, what the side effects are, et cetera, et cetera. So Valproate is actually FDA approved for acute mania, but it's not approved for maintenance treatment in bipolar disorder. So that's interesting. It, it, I see a lot of patients who are on Depakote for maintenance purposes, which is kind of, again, kind of contradictory to the FDA approval, and the evidence doesn't really support the use of it yet it gets done anyway and you know clinically clinically I do think there's some benefit to maintenance Depakote but again the evidence doesn't support it as strongly as something like lithium where there is some evidence to support its use in maintenance cases. Other indications of Depakote because you know these are anticonvulsant medications they will work for seizure disorder and migraine headaches as well. So Valproate is rapidly absorbed after a person ingests it orally and it has peak plasma levels that are achieved within one to two hours so again it's going to be absorbed rapidly and it's going to peak in terms of its plasma levels quite rapidly in comparison to some of the other medications it is of course metabolized by the liver and does not have any active metabolites sometimes that's an important point because some of our dopamine blocking medications have active metabolites that continue that either extend out the half-life of the medication or, or make it a little bit more um, difficult to work with when you're dealing with that situation of active metabolites. It has a shorter half-life than most medications. It's only about eight hours. That's why it's usually dosed twice a day. Blood levels for treatment of mania are not well established. So there are you can get a blood level or Depakote and you should get one and this is more so to make sure people do not become toxic, but you can't really follow the blood levels to indicate whether or not it's necessarily therapeutic or not, because that's not as well established. Although, what I'll say about it is generally speaking, we look for 80 to 100 micrograms per mil, and that's where we're gonna look to get a patient to. So especially someone in an acute manic phase, we wanna have a level of 80 to 100. You can co-administer Valproate with Lamotrigine, so this is a popular combination in patients who are not well controlled on a single mood stabilizer. You may use Valproate as well as Lamotrigine, but what you got to watch out for is Lamotrigine toxicity. The general rule of thumb is if you're on Depakote and you're going to add Lamotrigine, you want to do half of the Lamotrigine dose that you would normally do. So you cut your Lamotrigine dose by 50%. So Valproate can be started at lower doses. You could generally start around 250 milligrams a day. And there's also a loading dose you can do, and this can be very helpful for someone who's acutely manic and, and really uh, needs immediate treatment, needs immediate relief of the symptoms. You can do 20 milligrams per kilogram per day, and that, that's your typical treatment for acute mania. There is an immediate release and extended release formulation. So again, extended release always adds the benefit of having once daily dosing. The presumed mechanism of action for Valproate is increased levels of GABA. So remember GABA is the major inhibitory neurotransmitter and that is the presumed mechanism of this medication. The most worrisome effects of Valproate are effects that occur on the liver. So we wanna be mindful that Anybody with liver dysfunction or elevated LFTs, we want to watch out. 30% of patients will develop a mild transient increase in their liver function tests. And this usually occurs early on in treatment, the first three months, and usually remains asymptomatic. So this is an asymptomatic increase in liver function tests and occurs early in treatment, usually within the first three months. In some cases, though, Valproate has been known to, call, to cause increased ammonia levels, and this can, change, this can cause changes in a person's mental status. So one of the things we look for when someone has altered mental status is we'll do what's called an ammonia level on them. It's a blood test, and if it's elevated, that might be one of the causes, and that's usually liver-related. 
Very rare complications include things like hemorrhagic pancreatitis and something called aplastic anemia. So a CBC and LFTs are monitored routinely. You're going to need to do that on your patients before and during treatment. And you're also going to want to make sure you're watching out for another side effect, especially in, in young women, is polycystic ovarian syndrome. So PCOS and menstrual irregularities can occur in up to 10% of women, especially those who start the medication as teenagers. So the younger you start it, the more at risk you are for PCOS. Common side effects include things like nausea, vomiting, heartburn, diarrhea, sedation, dizziness, ataxia, which means being off balance when you're walking, and weight gain. Depakote should be avoided in women who are pregnant, and that is because there is a very significant teratogenic, teratogenic effect on neural tube defects, and this can happen regardless of using folic acid or not. So you want to avoid this medication in pregnant women at all costs. Valproate is an effective treatment for acute mania. The older literature sometimes suggests that valproate may be better than lithium at things like mixed states and people who are rapid cyclers, so rapid cyclers having four or more mood, mood episodes in a year. So mixed, mixed states with depression, rapid cycling, valproate might be your, your better go-to medication provided there's no contraindications. There is little evidence to support the use of valproate in bipolar depression. So again, this medication like lithium doesn't really work for bipolar depression or it doesn't work as well. Valproate may also be a benefit for patients who are aggressive and those with TBI, so to traumatic brain injury. And the reason behind that is that, and, and, and this does get used all the time off-label for aggression and agitation. It, it, it is very good for that. And think about the mechanism. It works on GABA. It's increasing GABA levels. So it's going to ca calm everything down. You're working on the major inhibitory neurotransmitter. I'm going to hold it there for now on this video. If you guys have questions or comments about Pro 8, drop them below. I'm very happy to answer them. And if you are enjoying the content we're making and you want to see more, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps us to keep making content.